So this might be the best all-around watch I reviewed yet on the show. It's classic without being overly derivative. The specs for the price are amazing. And there's actually a lot of cool little touches that give it more character than you might expect. Today we're taking a look at the prototype Gin Clear Diver from Second Hour Watches. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, uh, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch. And today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Gin Clear Diver prototype from Second Hour Watches. Uh, Second Hour is a new brand that was started by Peter Sargason, uh, who is a self-professed scuba diving fanatic, and that's where the watch gets its name from. Uh, it's a scuba, Gin Clear is a scuba diving term uh, where it refers to extremely clear water, water that is, I guess, as clear as gin, which is supposed to be the ideal conditions for scuba diving. This watch has been making the rounds on YouTube and there's been a lot of people who have reviewed it already uh, leading up to their launch which should be coming up on March 31st so it'll be coming up on Kickstarter then. And I'm actually really happy that I get a chance to review it because this watch kind of surprised me with how much I actually liked it. Um, I think when I saw some of the other reviews and saw some of the product pictures um, it seemed maybe a little bit on the plain or generic side but now that I actually have it in my hands and I've been wearing it um, I've really kind of fallen in love with it. I think that um, it really is just kind of like the, the perfect archetypal dive watch. It's got everything that you would want out of a dive watch. And when you're building a, a watch collection, obviously you want some like quirky pieces that are sort of weird. But for the backbone of a collection, you really want a good everyday solid watch uh, that you can wear. And if you're not building a collection, if you just want like one watch, then that's definitely I think the kind of watch you want to go for. And I think that's what this Gin Clear Diver is. I mean, to me, this is like one of the best daily wear pieces that I've ever seen. And again, even though it is very simple looking at first, there's a lot of cool details in it that sort of you know really give it more character than you might expect initially on uh, to, on you know on, on first glance. So let's go ahead and dive into this and take a look and see what we got and uh, hopefully you guys can get a, a clear idea of whether this is something you're going to be interested in backing on Kickstarter or keeping an eye on. Um, it's definitely one that I'm going to be keeping an eye on because I, I think this is a, a really compelling watch that Peter's put together here. So looking at this first from a value standpoint, I think this is a pretty amazing value for the money that they're offering, particularly if you can get it at one of the early bird pricing. Um, I believe you can get this for under $400 for the first 80 backers, and you're getting a Swiss Salita SW200 movement, uh, which is one of the, the best movements you can get in the sort of budget price range. It's got a high beat, 28,000 beats per hour, smooth sweeping second hand, hacking, hand winding. It's very thin, which enables it to be fit into thinner cases, and this watch has a pretty um, manageable 13 millimeter thickness on it. And it's also very quiet. It's, it's the kind of thing that you know, doesn't give you a lot of rotor noise or things like that. So it's just a great movement that he's been able to put in here. And typically you don't find this movement on watches below around $500. And the other specs are great as well. You're getting a domed sapphire crystal. You're getting really bright uh, Swiss Super Luminova. It's that you know, really bright blue BGW-9. Screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. A really solid bracelet uh, that is just, it's just a, a really comfortable bracelet. You're getting solid end links. You're getting a, a really great clasp with a milled clasp and six micro adjusts on it. Uh, so build, build quality is great as well. Full retail price of this is going to be $570 if they're successful on Kickstarter and eventually make it to retail, which I think is a, a, a fair price for this. But the Kickstarter deals that he'll be launching at the start are really phenomenal values. So definitely if you're interested in this, I would, I would recommend um, locking it in at one of those prices if this is something you want to pick up. Because, yeah, I, you can't get anything like this for under $400 that I'm aware of right now. So based on specs and value alone, I think this is a, a really compelling watch. Um, but again, I, I think you know my initial impression of it was that it looked kind of simple. It looks like just a, a classic, ordinary dive watch um, that just happens to have great specs. But the more time I've spent with it, the more little kind of small details that I've realized and, and noticed and appreciated. And I think it has a lot more character than you might first expect. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it now and see some of the, those cool little details that he's packed in here. Um, yeah, and take a look at it. 
Um, one thing to note, this is a prototype watch and there are going to be changes uh, with the watch, so I'll note those as we go through, um, as we talk about it and, and look at the different changes that are in there. This actually comes in a really cool travel case. Um, it's pretty nice. It's, it's all leather. It's not like that fake leather that you typically get. Uh, it can hold two watches in there, so that's kind of a cool touch. And here's the Gin Clear Diver up close and personal. As mentioned, this is a prototype. You're going to see some changes going through. And immediately you're going to notice one problem with this prototype is that the movement um, is having some issues. So you can see the second hand has stopped right now. Uh, if I shake it around a little bit, I can probably get it to move. Um, this is not something that I expect should be an issue on the full. Uh, on the production model, I have talked with Peter about it, and this is, you know, this is a prototype that is a review unit that has been passed around the world to a lot of reviewers. And I think I'm last on the list, um, so this guy's been through a lot. Um, but uh, Peter has said he's still going to give this guy a full uh, checking over when he gets back and talk to the manufacturer. Again, inside you're getting a Swiss Salita SW200 movement, which typically doesn't have these kinds of problems, and this watch does come with a two-year warranty. So um, I wouldn't expect this to be any issue on the uh, the production model, but I mention that because as you're looking at this, you're probably going to notice that sometimes the second hand is going to be moving, and sometimes it's not, and that is why. So finishing over it, uh, primarily you're getting a brushed, brushed finish. Um, one change that they're going to be making is on the lugs. Uh, this is going to have a, uh, a beveled edge that's going to be polished, so it'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit more unique there. Get some nice crown guards that are coming out, uh, protecting the crown there. And the bracelet is really well done. Um, I love the way that it can kind of lay flat like this on the back. It's just really comfortable on the wrist. Um, solid links, push pins, and then a clasp with six micro adjustments, which is great. You're also getting a nice solid milled clasp as well. And then you can see on the back that they've went for a sea turtle on the back of this, which is kind of cool. You don't see many sea turtles on the back of watches. Really nice uh, engraving there. And I'm a fan of this not being an open case back. I like a, a good solid engraved case back on the back of a diver. I think that's cool. Getting a signed screw down crown, which is pretty easy to operate. And you'll notice that this is a date version. Um, I believe the expectation is that they're not going to be offering the date version initially. That'll be a, a stretched goal. Um, so initially there'll only be no date models, but if the campaign goes well, they'll also offer um, date versions. And there is going to be more dial options, more dial colors. Um, this one here is the black one. Uh, you can see that the, the te there's a texture on the dial, which is one of those kind of cool touches that I was talking about earlier that sort of gives us more character. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some of those cool little touches on here. Um, so yeah, so that textured dial is really neat. I like that. Um, it's got kind of a, a nice fine black sand sort of texture on it. Uh, this one is, a, is the gold gilt one, so you've got uh, gold indices and hands, uh, which I think goes really well with the black. I really like that. And then particularly you're going to uh, notice that second hand with the uh, the really detailed counterbalance on there of their logo. I think in that instance, in that it looks really cool, and yeah, it's something that you really kind of appreciate and admire the detail in there and just the geometry of it. I think that's a really cool uh, counterbalance on the second hand. Another really unique thing about the uh, the choice here is that on the dial you're getting uh, circle hour markers, but at 12, 4, and 8, so every four hours. Um, you get trapezoids, so d different ones. So you know, typically you're going to find you know the, the different ones at the at the corners, right? At 12, 3, 6, and 9, there'll be something a little bit different. In this case, he's gone every four hours, so there's only three on the dial, which gives yeah kind of an interesting geometry to it, uh, which is something that is unique to this watch. And yeah, I think it kind of plays in with the logo a little bit too. There's definitely an interest in geometry going on in there, uh, which is yeah is is fun and unique and, and interesting to look at. The bezel, I think, is also a little bit uh, different than you would normally think. I, I, I like the font on it. It's got this kind of really squarish font um, that, yeah, also you know has some good uh, symmetry to it. And the bezel is really well laid out. Um, fully loom bezel will be getting loom shot in a minute here, but also really nice and unique touch. The bezel is 120 clicks, and it is amazing. It's one of the best feeling bezels that I've. Uh, had the, the chance to play around with. Just really uh, smooth operation, no back play, um, turns really easily but with really def defined clicks and just you know great sound to it as well. So if you like a good bezel this is this is a great one to get. Um, this is kind of brings us to another one of the changes that they're gonna make. It's a ceramic bezel 
which is great. You know, getting a ceramic bezel at this price, again, value is outstanding here. Um, you can see it is highly reflective. They're going to add a light brushing to the finish of the bezel to cut down on the reflections a little bit. Another thing that I really like about this is that uh, slightly domed sapphire crystal. I think the distortion on the uh, extreme angles is really cool on this, and that's something that I always had fun looking at. You can just, you know, really you know, see that on the sides there. Gives it a really neat effect, and yet that's only at the really extreme angles. If you're looking at it straight on, there's almost no distortion, and it just looks great. Often on prototypes, I don't do a full loom comparison, but I was impressed enough with the loom on this that I wanted to see how, even in this sort of unfinished state, uh, it held up against some of the other watches in my collection. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and run a little bit of a contest here. I've got some watches that I think have really good loom, and we're going to go ahead and uh, run a test where we'll rank these from uh, first to last based on how bright their hands are and how bright their markers are. Uh, so going from left to right, we have the Orient Star Sports Outdoor, the SWC Diver, the Citizen Nighthawk, the Gin Clear uh, Diver Prototype, and then on the far right we have the Cassie Oak, uh, which I recently reviewed as well. So we'll rank these up uh, after a one hour time lapse and kind of see how they do compared to each other. As you can see, the Gin Clear Diver does really impressive on this test. Now this is a one hour test. Um, I would imagine we might get some slightly different results if we wanted to really do kind of like an endurance test and see after three or four hours. But I think one hour is usually a pretty good indication of the strength of the loom. So let's go ahead and get the results here and figure out which one kind of won the contest. And surprisingly, when it comes to marker brightness, the Gin Clear prototype beat out the SWC Diver taking first place. That's the first time I've had a watch be able to do that in this test. Um, and then it still had a really strong showing on the hand brightness as well at third place. Um, so really strong loom overall. Really impressed with that. And I think they did a great job with the, uh, the loom. So if that's something you like, um, definitely a strong point of this watch. Okay, pros and cons for the Gin Clear Diver. Um, well, I we've gone over, I think, most of the pros, just to, to highlight amazing value for money, um, excellent daily watch with absolutely everything that you could hope for. Um, I mean, like I have like a checklist of things that I want out of a watch, and this hits pretty much all of them. So there, there's nothing spec-wise or price-wise that I can complain about this. Um, it's just a great all-around dive watch. I love the kind of dressiness of it. I love having dive watches that are tough but have an elegance to them. I think that gives it just a, 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 a great level of versatility. Um, this is the kind of watch that you can wear with a lot of different outfits. You can swap it over to a leather band or a different kind of strap um, and dress it up a little bit, wear it into the office and probably get away with it. Um, particularly on this, this version, I love the sort of black texture dial with the gold gilt. Uh, accents. I think that's you know maybe my favorite of the bunch. Some of the other ones are maybe a little bit uh, the colors are a little bit more fun, a little bit more casual. Um, this one to me is a little bit more on the dressy side, and I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I just love the the style and the versatility of it. Uh, so what are the cons? Um, it's not available yet. Uh, so this is a Kickstarter watch. So you can't actually go out and buy this yet, which is kind of a con. It's got to get through the Kickstarter process first, and that's got some of its own you know. Uh, challenges there and not everybody likes Kickstarter so that's one uh, but as far as like talking about the the actual watch itself I don't really have much I can complain about one very minor thing was the uh, the logo I'm not a huge fan of it I think it looks great on the counterbalance um, but on the actual dial I don't know um, yeah it's 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 okay and some people, you know, that, that's a very subjective thing. So some people will probably like it, others won't. Um, but I think with micro brands, a lot of times, the, the logo design is something that is very personal to the creator. Um, and it's something that they're very proud of. But, you know, a logo design and graphic design is a different thing from watch design. So I see this a lot where, you know, the watch is amazing and just the, the logo or the, the font or something is, is, you know, not quite up to the same level of polish that the rest of the watch is. Um, but yeah, so here I go complaining about logos again. I think the last time I did that was with the SWC Diver, which was in the same boat. If you hear me going off on how I don't like the logo, and that's the only thing I have to complain about, that's usually a positive for the watch itself. But that's one thing to note. If you guys, you know, to check out the logo if that bugs you or whatever. But um, other than that, I, I can't think of any other cons that I can give to this. Other than then, yeah, it's, it's a Kickstarter watch. It doesn't have a proven track record. Um, and you got to take a little bit of a, a, a jump and a faith in Peter. Uh, with that, but the watch that I have in hand has been amazing. Um, you know, as mentioned before, you know, this particular model did have some troubles with the movement, which is a mild concern, but you know, this is a prototype that's been passed around the world and shipped all over the place to a bunch of reviewers. I think I'm kind of last on the list. 
and Peter assured me that they were going to, you know, run this one, this particular model as soon as he gets it back, run it through a pretty good uh, quality check with the manufacturer. Um, inside, it's a Salita SW200 movement, which is one of the best movements you can get in this, and they are offering a two-year warranty with these as well. So I don't anticipate that being a problem in the production model, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think about the watch, what your impressions of it were, taking a look at the, uh, the shots and the videos as we went through. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys are scuba divers out there, if, if this rings um, true with you, um, if you can feel the scuba diving heritage in there. I'm not, so um, to me, gin clear doesn't mean anything, um, but the watch itself I think is really um, just a, a great classic everyday dive watch that, yeah, I've really enjoyed my time getting to uh, wear it and to check it out and I'll be sending this one back to uh, to Peter pretty soon so he can do a full uh, rundown on the, the movement and all that but um, again Kickstarter is launching on March 31st so I'll leave links to the website so you can check it out down below but that will wrap it up for this review thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time bye